Well, he was on the air when the story broke. Mark Schlereth, former Bronco, great, three rings, multiple Pro Bowls, five years playing with John Elway. All right, let's start. You're on the air, end of the show, I imagine. The story breaks. What were you saying two minutes before the story broke, Russell Wilson's being benched? (laughs) Two minutes before, I was like, based on the contract situation and based on the production versus what he costs, there is no way you can go forward with Russell Wilson being your quarterback next year. And so it was interesting because – Obviously, you can sit there and talk about all the things he has done and all the things he's done in the past. But right now, what you're paying him versus the production that you're getting, those two things don't match up. They don't align. So um, it just was one of those situations where we were talking about moving on from Russell Wilson and next year uh, starting over again. So interestingly enough, and the news breaks and and, you know, that's one of those things as you and I talk about uh Man, that's manna from heaven right there. That's that's radio gold. Okay, so we've seen a couple different times Peyton has indicated, hey, maybe I have to simplify the game plan. Maybe I and what it's telling me is is that Russell's not delivering on things Sean's preparing for. That's what that's telling me. Am I wrong? You played this sport at a high level. When he says that stuff, we gotta simplify it. What's Sean saying? What was he saying there? that we can't execute the offense. We cannot execute the structure of the offense as it's intended to be executed. Therefore, we have to simplify things. We have to throw the screen passes. We have to throw the bubble screens. We can't get the intermediate routes developed. When you look at Russell Wilson, there are very few things right now that he's doing exceptionally well. And the other problem that you get into is oftentimes – Russell uh, perceives pressure and and he's constantly escaping out of the back of the the pocket. Therefore, he's creating pressures. He's creating sacks. He's creating missed opportunities. Um, I always talk about the anticipatory nature of throwing the football into windows. And we've seen this a lot with Tua, how he'll throw the ball and it'll look like he's throwing it right to a safety. All of a sudden, a wide receiver comes into the screen and snatches the ball out of the air. Those are things you don't see in the Denver Broncos offense. You see the design of those things, and you see receivers coming open into those windows, but he doesn't anticipate those windows opening, and he'll just take off and run and try to scramble around and make a play. And so I can see and feel the frustration of Sean Payton, who wants to orchestrate an offense, and a quarterback who can't actually orchestrate the offense that he wants to 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 basically implement. So those are the things that are going on here. And just based on the lack of production and lack of offensive uh, proficiency, I understand why they did it. Um, Jarrett Stidham signed in the offseason. At the time, I thought, that's a lot of money for a backup. Do you think Peyton um, forecasted, looked at tape, saw some potential difficulties, throwing between the hash marks? What did you make of Stidham as a signing? Because it was a little bit of a warning flag for some of us that saw it happen. Yeah, I think that you look at, I mean, you look at Stidham and and he had the one game against the 49ers when he played for the Raiders last year that he really put uh, some big time offensive numbers up. And and so I think there is that that warning sign that, hey, man, here's a guy that I think I can develop into, you know, into a, a, a player or a quarterback who can operate my offense. And honestly, that's what, you know, Sean wants. He wants that ability to to throw the ball in those intermediate windows, to throw the deep in cutting routes and things of that nature that Russell truly has never he's never been great at. Um, and he certainly hasn't done that this year. So yeah, I, I suppose it probably should have been somewhat of a warning flag, but you know, the 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 need and, and it's shown this year more than ever, the need to have that number two quarterback that you can plug in there and he can get you through a game or two or three or four. Or so Yes, yeah, Stidham is going to be the guy, and we'll see exactly what he has the next two weeks. Um, and, you know, and is that the decision you go moving forward into next season? Do you draft a guy, try to develop a guy while Stidham takes over uh, as the kind of uh, the bridge quarterback, if you will? Now, I don't know if you have an answer here, but you know the inner workings of the Broncos as well as anybody certainly at this network. By getting rid of Russ, what you're saying is the GM currently who Sean didn't hire, you messed up. You gave up players. You gave up draft picks. 
It's not exactly a, a vote of confidence by Sean Payton toward the GM he inherited. You've got wealthy new ownership. Is there going to be a structural change at the top in your opinion? Yeah, it, it's a great question. And you're right. I don't know the answer to that. It just depends. I think one thing you see when Sean comes to, you know, to Denver, he takes over as the guy who's making the major decisions, right? He takes over and, and rubber stamps the, the players that you get in free agency. And so he's going to be in charge of all that stuff. So if the working relationship with George Payton is good and George Payton historically has been a really good, if you look at his record in Minnesota, drafting guys in the second and third round that produce and become big time players, that's kind of what he's been known for. So if that working relationship is great, Sean's going to have, you know, Sean's going to have the final approval and the decision making process. So if the working relationship is great, I don't think you'll see a move. Now, if there's somebody in Sean's past that he really likes that that he really connects with, then I could see that move being made. But as of right now, um, I don't know that there will be a move in the front office. Um, yeah, the whole thing's interesting. Do you think Russell has a market? No. <laughs> I mean, what, 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 like, what would the market be? I mean, certainly not at the, certainly not at the money that you're paying him right now. And, you know, ultimately he's older. Um, he still is, he still is athletic enough to move and to make plays, but ultimately there's a couple things you're doing right now as an offense, you're throwing, the, the bubble screens and the screen pass game, the swing pass game underneath. And then occasionally you're taking three or four shots down the football field per game, um, you know, on the play pass stuff where you've got seven, eight guys that are protecting and you're taking two man routes or three man routes down the football field. Those are the things you're doing right now where he makes the majority of the plays is off schedule plays where, where the majority of the problems show up are off scheduled plays where he takes five or six sacks a game because he decides that he he's not going to throw the ball or he sees a flash of color and thinks he's not protected and he creates issues that way. And, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I said on my show this morning, uh, I had never one time walked into a huddle where the quarterback said broken play on broke, broken play on two, <laughs> broken play on two. Let's go, you know, break. <laughs> it's not how it works. And so you can't operate you know, you can't operate solely on, hey, let, let's let's throw a swing pass. And if that's not there or let's throw, you know, a, a two man route combination, if that's not there, just pull the ball, scramble around and make something happen. Um, that's not a sustainable form of offense. And, and I think that's where a lot of the frustration um, has come to a head for Sean Payton. Such a good job on this. Mark Schlereth, story broke on his radio show. He's got the Niners at the Commanders, a bounce-back spot for Brock Purdy, we imagine, we think, although Commanders can be feisty, West Coast team travel in East short week. Uh, Mark, as always, great. Well, we appreciate you stopping by late. You really added a dimension to our yeah. show, and I appreciate it. Not a problem, Colin. Take care, buddy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.